And as we're able to sit in this landscape that we would normally feel so torn by and expand and encompass all of it, we begin to experience a quality of basic goodness that can accommodate everything. As we change our own attitude about our habitual patterns and begin to accommodate everything in this way, we begin to feel a subtle and then dramatic shift rather than being dragged by these conventional ways we've pursued happiness. We feel liberated into simply being in the midst of our whole world, appreciating, enjoying our world in a very rich way. And the practice goes on to a tremendous sense of joy and appreciation in a realm of crazy wisdom, crazy wisdom meaning a realm in which we are not bound by conventional likes and dislikes, where we can accommodate everything in our world with a sense of unconditional, non-dual celebration. Our practice will end in a feast practice that is particularly done on the anniversaries of the parinirvanas of our teachers, a very rich offering in which we celebrate our sense perceptions, our emotions, our thoughts, that we enjoy every aspect of our experience. We celebrate our ability to hold the intensity of what we would normally run from and sit together and appreciate and celebrate that together. And it's during this part of the practice that we will be eating and drinking together. We will have a, a kind of we don't think of it as a performance, but more of an offering of the enjoyment of every aspect of life. And feast practice always includes eating, drinking, singing, and dancing, and we will be doing that as part of this, as part of this part of the evening. Many of you have done this practice many times and you know how it goes. Others of you are newer to the practice. It's important to follow the chant leader, and that's me. <laughs> so that there will be pauses, there will be times that we repeat things several times. I'm not going to go through and explain every aspect of the practice. There's times when we'll be chanting more slowly in a more heartfelt way. Other times we'll be chanting more quickly and picking up the beat. In general, the prose sections of the chant are done quickly and the verse sections are done slowly. So please don't drag down in the prose sections and I'll be sort of carrying you along as best I can. There is a particular part in the practice where we will be chanting a very short mantra together over and over again, and this is the triple hum section, which we will be doing in three parts. The first five minutes, roughly, we will, we will be chanting quietly, but audibly together. Hum, 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 hum. Hum, hum, hum. And you don't have to stay with me. It'll be just your own rhythm of an audible but soft hum, hum, hum. And then we're going to fade into five minutes of silently in your mind chanting hum, 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 in your mind. <laughs> and then five minutes of letting the whole thing fade into a formless practice of just sitting together. So follow my lead. We'll be doing five minutes of audible five minutes inaudible chanting in our minds, and five minutes of resting in space. And then we will continue on with the practice. There will be words that you can't pronounce. Just do your best. Um, if you're new to it, just enjoy the kind of wonder of how this practice has a way, which none of us can quite explain, that it cheers us up when we move into a realm where we no longer grasp and reject our world the way we normally do. As we do the practice, the ordinary print is chanted together. I will be reading aloud the italicized sections. These are not chanted, all of us, together. But the italicized sections give us a sense of the practice. And we will begin with about five minutes of sitting first. I'll ring the gong. We'll sit. I'll read the italicized section, and then we will begin chanting together. 
I don't know what page number it is for you, but where it says Namo, earth, water, fire, and all the elements. And then you follow along. Okay.